What's up YouTube? Today we're gonna take a look at some race cars at the track shot with the EOS R5 and the EOS R6 combined with some really nice RF glass, namely the 7200, the 1535 and the 50mm f1.2. I did a similar assignment like this one in September last year, where we shot both stills and video of the drivers in the Swedish Time Attack series, and this year I'm doing basically the same thing on each event during the season. So May 1st was the first event for, for this season. And this was the first real video assignment where I decided to go with the R5. I've gotten rid of all my black magic gear because it's just simply too much to have four different camera systems to keep track of, uh, because at one point I had the Canon EF gear, the Canon RF gear, the Black Magic gear, and the Hasselblad gear at the same time. So I felt it was kind of time to slim things down a bit. And with the R5 and the R6, I finally feel that the video uh, quality is good enough to be able to deliver what I need. This was not the case with my previous DSLR, the 5D Mark IV. Uh, the video quality from that camera just is good enough, but uh, things have definitely changed with the introduction of the R5 and the R6. The big downside right now though is the H265422 codec that you get from these cameras. It's basically impossible to work with these files in Premiere on an iMac that's a couple of years old, which is what I'm using right now. So for now, until Apple releases a pro version of the iMac with a new chip, I'm simply converting all the video material to ProRes or ProRes LT or something before I even start working. And another solution is of course to use an external recorder like the Atmos Ninja 5 so that you can record to progress directly. And I'm actually planning to get one of those shortly to make life a bit easier. I also shot some B-roll and photography just for fun with the R6 since I haven't really had the chance to try this camera much yet. And both these cameras are just great for what I do and that is basically 90% photography and 10% video. And my assignment for this event was to shoot some interviews with the newcomers in this racing series as well as interviews with the prize winners of each class. So all in all we did about 30, 32 different interviews during the day and uh, each interview was about 2-3 minutes long or so. And then we also shot some portraits of the drivers so let's take a look at the setup. I lit this with one Aperture 300D Mark II and one Aperture 120D Mark II. And on those lights I used the Aperture Light Dome 2 Mini and the regular sized uh, Light Dome 2. And the challenge here was to avoid reflections in the backdrop because it was sort of a vinyl material, not super shiny but not matte either. So at first when I set up one light I noticed these really ra nasty reflections. So the solution here was to add another light and point them sort of from the side instead. And we shot the videos and the portraits in the same lighting because we knew that the time schedule might be a bit hectic now and then, so there simply was no time to switch between video and uh, a, a video setup with LED lights and a photo setup with flashes. So this was the best solution with the given prerequisites. And now to address the biggest issue with the R5, yes, it overheated on me. Which was expected since I shot everything in 4K HQ, or 4K Fine I think it's called. Uh, but that was, that was not until the very end, so my backup plan was to switch to the R6 if this happened, so that I could capture everything I needed anyway. The first 15 to 20 interviews were kind of evenly spread out, so then I had time to shut the camera off and let it cool down for 10, 15, 20 minutes, so that was not a problem. But at the end of the day, we shot maybe 10 to 12 interviews in a row, recording 2-3 minutes at a time without having the, the time to shut the camera down. So after about 10 interviews I saw that the overheat warning came on and eventually the camera shut down. But since I had the R6 as a backup, things worked out well anyway. And this is of course a problem if you're gonna shoot a lot of video with this camera. Uh, but like I said before, I do 90% photography and 10% video, roughly. And this did not come as a surprise for me, uh, plus I had the R6, which delivers perfectly good video quality for my needs anyway. So for me, I think this is a pretty good solution, having both photography and video capabilities in the same system. And speaking of video, I borrowed the RF 50mm f1.2 from a friend to try some super duper short depth of field 
stuff. But uh, shooting video outside in the middle of the day means you probably want to have an ND filter if you're going to shoot at f1.2. But uh, the ND filters I have are variable and from some early testing I got some really really bad vignetting and color casts from these filters. So I actually prefer not to use them. So what would be the solution then if I still want to shoot at f1.2? Well, that means a really really short shutter speed, like a thousand of a second. And of course I know about the general rule that you want to double the frames per second to, uh, to get the suitable shutter speed. But I thought to myself, what would it look like if I walked around moving the camera and shooting photos? Like click 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 with a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second. Well, I will get super blurry photos, right? So why not try to shoot some video with a thousand of a second shutter speed and see how it looks? Because that means that every captured frame in my video would have an extremely short exposure time and thus being super sharp. These clips are shot at f1.2, ISO 100 and 1000 of a second shutter speed and a frame rate of 59.94 frames per second slowed down to 23.976 seconds in post. And I must say I think it looks pretty damn sharp. And of course if I had moved the camera too quickly I'm guessing that I would get kind of a choppy result and that's when you want the natural looking motion blur by doubling the frame rate, um, shooting at something like 100th of a second in this case. But I just wanted to point out that you don't always have to follow this rule by doubling the frame rate. Uh, you can get some pretty good results anyway. It depends on what you have to work with, your, your light settings and so on. So just experiment a little bit. Don't be afraid to try things out. Uh, just see how it looks. That's my tip. And to round things off, I'm just going to show you some photos I shot during this weekend using all three different RF lenses I had with me. The 7200, the 1535 and the 50mm f1.2. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I hope you found it useful. If you did, you are more than welcome to click those like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.